Hi, my name is Federico Zakayan. In this course you will learn 3JS game development basis. In the first lesson you will see the 3D basis. We'll start talking about object 3D, vector 3D, how to create a box, how to implement the camera, the scene, how to render the image, and how to add light to the scene. Particularly the ambient lights and directional lights. In the second lesson we'll be talking about game design. What is game design and why is game design important? We will sketch a landing page, the instructions page, how to win and how to lose. In the third part of this course we will be talking about basic game programming algorithms. Like the loop machine to create many frames per second, resizing the canvas when the window is maximized, how to load 3D models, how to listen the input from the keyboard, how to communicate one module with other, how to load animations and make transition between them, and how to load and handle sounds in our game. How cool is that? In the fourth lesson we will go a further more. We will talk about advanced game programming algorithms such as character controller, boxes aligned with the world axes, axis aligned bounding box collision, and building game user interfaces. In the lesson number five we finally we will deploy our project in a server. We will create a GitHub account, and we will create the website that will contain our own 3D game made with JavaScript completely for free. Then you will can show the whole world, to your friends and family your first 3D game created by yourself. It is gonna be awesome. Don't hesitate, just take a seat and start your game with this course. The lesson one is coming. First things first. We need to talk about a special element in the three-dimensional world from the beginning. This element is a little complicated to understand, but take it easy. You can came back to this lesson as long as you remember the concepts you will learn here. That special thing is the object 3D. An object 3D is a generic object that contain a bunch of functionality that can be used by any other object who extends it. For example, the camera extends from an object 3D, the scene extends from an object 3D, and many other objects also extends from an object 3D. Each object that extends from an object 3D has methods that allow them to do many things, such as move the object around, rotate it in different axes, scale it in different sizes, and more. The object 3D also has several properties where is the information about the object. For example, where is the object, how is rotated, how small or big is its size. The first property we will see will be the position. We will handle the position as a special type of information, a vector 3. A vector 3 is an object with only three properties. X, Y and Z. But it has many methods to change the values of those properties. For example the method set, that allows us change the value of the three properties at once. On the other hand, we can change those values separately using the method set x, set y or set z. We can also make some complex math such as measure the distance between two vector 3. As you can imagine the vector 3 is used to save the position of one object in a coordinate system. But also we can use a vector 3 to save the scale of an object. A vector 3 is an object with a structure where there are always three numerical values on it. To create our first project we need to follow the official documentation. That is why we need to copy the library locally. So, we open a folder with Visual Studio Code and create an index.html file with a standard code loading locally the code we have already copied from the official website. To follow good practices we suggest to you create a subfolder src with an index.js file on it. It has to be a module. That file will be where our code will start. Then we need to looking for how to create a mesh in the official documentation. We will copy the first three lines, and we will create a new ECMAScript 6 module named box.js. Once we paste the code we need rename the mesh as box, and then export it. To check that everything is okay we can show the mesh on console. We can see on console that the mesh contain a box geometry and a mesh basic material. You will need to install the Visual Studio extension called Live Server to build up easily a local server. After that, you can click with the secondary button on the HTML file to run your project. 
Once we arrive to the official documentation, we will copy the camera line code that we find. Then we will wrap it with an ECMAScript module named camera.js in the SRC folder. We need to export it and check if we can see it on the console. It is a good time to see what the documentation says about the perspective camera. This kind of camera contains methods, properties, and a constructor method that receive parameters. The FOV parameter represent the field of view, how open is the vision angle of the camera. The second parameter is the aspect of the camera, how square or rectangular is the image the camera catch. The third parameter set the nearest camera limit. And the fourth parameter establishes the farthest limit of the camera. The camera will only catch objects between the limits. There is no mystery on the scene. We just place it in an ECMAScript 6 module and export it. It is a good time to remember that the scene in any object that extends from an object 3D contain the method ADD to set other object as a child. So we will set the box as a scene's child. Other thing we can note is that the object 3D contain the property position with the default values. 0, 0, 0. So, in order to organize the scene it will be convenient move the camera behind of the box, just 5 units in the Z-ax. We can also make the camera look at the box position, just because every object 3D has that method look at to do that. Now is time to show on the screen our scene. We can do that with the Rondera. You know what to do. Go to the documentation and copy everything related with a renderer and paste in an ECMAScript 6 module named renderer.js. Watch out! There is other line we need to copy scrolling down. We will paste it on the index.js file. Once we do that, it is done. Our first scene is visible on the screen. There is not much to say about the renderer, it is like a printer. You send info the printer and the printer give to you a paper with an image. Similarly, you send info the renderer and the renderer give to you a canvas with an image. But, to see the canvas it should be inside of the body. Now we need to talk about lights. Unfortunately, there is no code lines related to lighting to copy in the getting started tutorial. So we need to go to the official documentation. There are a bunch of lights references. But we only are going to see two of them. The first one is the ambient light. So, we have to copy and paste into a module named light.js. In addition, we will do the same with the directional lights. These lights are very different. We will set the directional light as a child of the ambient light. The first one allow to the camera see everything on the scene. But the second one, light just only one side of the things leaving the or her side with shadows or darkness. In these examples we set the camera position in a different place to see the different faces of the cube. On the other hand, we have to note that some meshes has materials that do not interact with lights and looks always with the same color, no matter if there are lights or not. That is the case of the mesh basic material. If we swap it as mesh font material we will see the difference. You have to know that the directional light has a position 0, 1, 0. And a target with the position 0, 0, 0. It means that the directional light is pointing down creating a midday lighting. We can change the position of the directional light to create a sunset effect. Congratulations! You have finished the lesson 1. This is the biggest step to achieve the goal of this course which is how to make a 3D video game with JavaScript. Just in case you need it, there is source code of the lesson available to test yourself every concept we saw here. So, practice what we've seen until now, write or copy and paste the examples, watch this video a few more times, and after that, I'll see you in the next lesson.